Welcome again to VTUE Shikshana's program of uh, building services, water supply and sanitation. In the previous class, uh, we saw how uh, waste water, uh, actually in the module 2, waste water or sewage water was uh, assessed and uh, there were the various types of waste water and sewage water. And today we are going to see as to, now we are going to see as to how exactly uh, they are conveyed through various, all the systems that we learned in the previous class. If you get back to the previous class and see as to how exactly all these waste waters and storm waters are segregated into the main conveyance system and uh, uh, you know, they will have their own sewage systems if it is uh, separate or if it is combined or uh, how exactly it connects to the catch basins and then until the outfalls. Now, we are going to look into collection and conveyance of sewage. Basically, the sewage or sanitary sewer collection systems are responsible for collecting as well as conveying wastewaters. Now, what are waste waters? Now, waste waters are waters that are generated out of all our uh, waste coming out or exiting out of our wet areas in our residences and institutions and uh, it is generated there and then it is led into the water treatment plant. Why are we doing this? What is the purpose of this? This basically actually collects as well as conveys the waste water from all our homes and industries at a flow velocity which is greater than 2 feet per second to a wastewater plant. So, when this is done, so there is a continuous flow of water through and through the system from inlet to outlet continuously through the year. When this happens, there is no rush, there is no maintenance issues which comes in and that is why this particular flow velocity is always kept in consideration while working on the gradient. Now, why do we need this? We need this uh, in terms of conveyance and the conveyance happens right at source. At source, we would do it directly from home, right? So, if it is done directly from home, there are three different ways of doing this or looking at this called the gravity flow, the pressure pumping as well as the vacuum pumping. But if it is done from a septic tank, then there are two different ways only that is gravity as well as pressure pumping. But if there is uh, the conveyance which is done from the destination, any other destination which is which could not be from the other two, then it is done through cl uh, cluster systems or decentralized wastewater treatment plan. So, these are the different ways in which we are basically bringing together the conveyance systems and collecting them together to actually put them forward into the treatment process. So, before we get into it, I would also again get back to you know certain basics of sewers like what exactly is happening at the collection and transportation system. Now, here the waste water from each of your buildings collects itself into the sewers, right, into the sewers as well as transports until the water treatment plant. The characterization of waste water could be in two different forms, solids and liquids. The pipes could be in three different materials, plastic, ductile iron or concrete or lined concrete material. And there are two different types of sewages as we all know and must have heard of it time and again. One is the treated wastewater, the other is the untreated wastewater. Now, what is treated wastewater? Treated sewage is basically any wastewater which is passed through a treatment plant. Whereas, sewage which goes through several stages in the treatment process, it ensures that the harmful bacteria, pollutants and contaminants are eliminated. So, untreated is where it directly reaches to the source without getting into the treatment plant. 
there are three different types of sewages one is sanitary sewage storm water sewage and combined system of sewage and the way we convey them all is either by force which actually is force or pumped uh, pumped into the sewers then there is gravity system then there is low pressure system and then there is vacuum so these four different methods of conveyances are what we are going to look at now you know wastewater is basically liquid to move liquid from one place to another it's not an easy process if it is uh, not uh, through a gradient so what happens is basically there takes a lot of work to move liquid if the water is supposed to flow down downhill it's considered as gravity system now gravity system is a very conventional approach because it's used by most of the municipal corporations around the world this system is interrupted with pumping stations at every interval where the water suddenly has one normal gradient and then it lifts the water back up to a higher level and then again flows down the gravity so this is a continuous process otherwise we have something called as a push it system which is also called as the pressure system because it utilizes a lot of pressure or we also have the pull it system which is the vacuum system now to work on this particular you know um, cycle of water we calculate the work in terms of uh, horsepower so you know how much uh, one horsepower is 0.746 kilowatts so that's the amount of uh, you know uh, units that is required when we are talking about pumping and uh, vacuuming the gravity systems are the traditional methods of sewage disposal now these systems take advantage of the natural slope slope of the uh, ground they collect all the waste water they take it away from your properties and they allow the flow of the authority sewage network now when this system transports the waste water to the treatment plant the water table is very low and the land is not prone to flooding so what happens is you have your residences right so each of your residences have manholes so from the residences because of the downhill it flows through the gravity system and suddenly there is an uphill that is when it pulls up so there is a lift station which pulls it up again pushes it down the gravity and then with the flow it enters into your treatment plant so this is called as a gravity system follows a gradual slope through and through the conventional methods most of the home collection systems are basically gravity flow or gravity flow plus pump stations so you would have gravity flow in lateral and then there would be one system which is going to decentralize this facility and um, you know conclude it at the pump station the next is the low pressure sewer system the low pressure sewer system is basically the low head pressure waste water collection and treatment system there is an alternative to gravity sewer system or a septic tank it is also called as a septic tank because here what happens is there is a lot of pressure which is low okay and this low pressure consists of an interceptor tank there is an interceptor tank and a chamber unit which basically is housed within a small submersible electrical pump so all these three to, uh, together they are put up together when there is no gravity conveniently found around your systems <coughs> so what happens is the tank is basically installed below the ground much like your septic tank all the organic waste occurs in the interceptor tank the liquid in the tank or the effluent is pumped automatically okay through a small pressure line that transports the waste water for the treatment plant that is the water treatment plant you have your residences from where there is the control panel okay which pumps it through the pumping unit and through the pumping unit it discharges it into the boundary wall from the boundary wall right from your building drains 
everything is discharged into your main trunk sewers. So, pumping it into the sewer line is conveniently easier when the gradient is uh, not of a sloping gradient or if the gravity is not very strong. So, what basically happens is until unless you have your gravity, you follow the gravity line. If not, then a pumping station is provided or a pumping line is provided, a unit with an access way and cover because for maintenance. And then this storage tank would basically be connected until the service main, you know. So, you would have a private on site system and you would also have a, a you know a public system. This is basically a diagram showing a low pressure system. So, that is a lake, right, that is a water body, and then there are a lot of residences here. Now, each of these residences are connected to the street, right. So, this street would have a lot of pressure here and since the lake or the water body is there, the slope is this way, right. So, all the water from the streets and from the residences basically is going to flow into the lowest level. The lowest level is where the lake is actually bound. So, what happens is now the street is against the gravity. So, when you see that the street is against the gravity, you are basically bringing in pressure means here. So, at each of these levels, you would have this kind of a pressure sewer, which would have a grinder pumping unit and that would be connected to each other and then from there it is pumped into your main treatment plant. This is also called as the vacuum sewage system. It is an alternative method to the conventional gravity system. It is used in areas where the water charge, uh, where the uh, you know water charge ground or the reclaimed ground or flat areas or recreation areas or camping sites are actually norm normal. And this needs a central vacuum station with vacuum pipes with vacuum pumps, collection chambers, discharge pumps as well as associated controls are needed. The various fittings that are connected to the whole system are through vacuum and that wall basically operates on electricity. So, it requires an additional power supply in case of power failure. So, imagine this to be a house, right? <coughs> that is a property boundary. This is an air vent from your system, right? And that would be a collection chamber with a vacuum pump. So, at the ground level, you have your vent and you also have an isolation valve. So, when that is done, when this fills in, this is going to vacuum up all the pressure and then bring it upward and then connect it to your main sewer. So the section would be like this that is the building. You have your gravity building, right? So, it comes and enters into your clean outs. So, this is this main sewer which works on vacuum, okay, to whatever street. There would be a vacuum branch, and then the vacuum branch is connected to the vacuum interface unit. Both of them are connected. This flows through gravity, this flows through vacuum, and they are connected through one main profile and then this pro profile is basically going to exit out into the treatment plant. So, this is how the vacuum station would be. You would have one vacuum pumping station and you would have one storage station. So, from where the whole interface unit is connected. Now, what happens in this kind of a system is you would have your rainwater pipelines, right? And on a storm water pits, both are connected to your storm water drain. So, you would have your curbside drain, which is going to bring up all your uh, storm water and connect it to the major storm water drain. Now, from this, and if there is any uh, overflow of the ground as well as, uh, you know, rain washers, they are all also going to combine together into the storm water and come together into the storm water drain. Once they enter into the storm water drain, you need to see 
that these trains are basically having enough ventilations. So, ventilations are provided because uh, of the foul smell that comes out of your wastewater pipelines. So, because the, uh, if the pipeline in its radius has 65 percent of capacity of wastewater in it, 35 percent would be oxygen. Now, this 35 percent of oxygen that you see here would uh, is needed for continuous flow, otherwise there might be blocka blockages. Now, how does the sewer work? The sewer works this way. So, you have your public sewer main through gravity it flows to the pumping station right and then this pumping station because there is no gravity here would you know again take forward everything from the gravity flow and then it would pump it out into the sewers with a lot of force. Now, this force would connect all these waste waters from each of these sewers into the wastewater treatment plant. Now, if we are actually comparing both uh, sanitary as well as combined systems, the so sanitary system is either of it, either a separate system or a combined system. A separate sewer system which can carries only sanitary wastewater with minor quantities of ground, storm and surface water are not inten intentionally admitted. Whereas, in a combined sewer both runoff and storm water from both the inlets along the streets and wastewater are put together. The combined system is designed with an overflow that discharges both the storm water as well as wastewater to a receiving stream when the flow in the water uh, pipeline exceeds the design capacity. This kind of a system is not permitted in most of the new developments that you see. Now, appurtenances that are needed in a sewer design, first manhole, manhole is a very important uh, factor in a sewer design because this is the access shaft, the access shaft would have a working chamber and a cover, the man manhole should either be of a shallow depth or a normal of up to 150 centimeter or de depth which should be at least until 150 centimeter. There is an access shaft. The portion of the hole which starts from the cover and goes down to the full depth is called as an access shaft because you are going to access this okay. and the height of the access is supposed to be at least until 1.5 meters. Then there is a working chamber where a person stands and then works on the manhole when there is a maintenance issue, it is called as a working chamber. That working chamber would have steps or ladders and they are provided to check if any falls and the bottom of the manhole is basically made out of concrete and it is called as an invert. It slopes towards the channel which is a part of the sewer. Now, this part is called as a cover, the manhole is basically provided with a frame on the top which is firmly embedded in the pavement. The cover should be very strong in terms of withstanding all kinds of loads of traffic. Now, this is a drop manhole, this is another type of manhole which is constructed to provide a connection between two different sewers when the difference of elevation between two pipes is more than 60 centimeter or equal to 60 centimeter. So, the, this the, the, like for example, if the sewer line is here and then there is one more sewer line which comes from there. So, there are two different types of sewer lines which are connected. So, a drop hole comes together as one unit at that moment. So, it avoids unnecessary steep gradient thus saves a large quantity of earthwork and they can be inspected horizontally just like a normal manhole. Grease and oil traps from a lot of industries and commercial spaces and restaurants and uh, other places like even our normal kitchens we would have a lot of grease and oils which come out right as discharges. Now, these discharges create an effluent and they actually make themselves into grease and oil traps. So, before they actually enter into our sewage pipes they should be removed. So, grease uh, traps and oil traps are the reason why all these oils are actually removed before they enter into the treat sewers or treatment plants. In case of the pipes the grease sticks to the walls and collects a lot of sand 
and other solids leading eventually to the decrease in the pipe ka diameter and sometimes it also leads to clogging. Inverted siphons are, are depressed sewers that run under gravity flow at a pressure which is above the atmosphere in the sewer and they are used to pass under obstacles such as buried pipes and subways. As the inverted siphon requires a lot of attention for maintenance, it should be used only when there is no other obstacle and the sewer is the only one that is to be considered. So, it is a very impractical way of having in chamber because two chambers are connected from point 1 to point 2 because there is some kind of a movement happening at this point and this needs a lot of maintenance due uh, in case of clogging. A lamp hole, this is an opening or a hole which is constructed in a sewer for purpose of lowering a lamp into it. It consists of stoneware or even a concrete pipe which is connected to the sewer line through a T junction. So, you would have a T junction there. This pipe is covered with the concrete to make it stable. It almost looks like a manhole cover only but it is sufficient strength and it is provided at a ground level to take the load of the traffic. Catch basins are basically provided to stop the entry of heavy debris which is present in the storm water into the sewers. However, their use is discouraged because of the nuisance due to mosquito breeding apart from posing substantial maintenance issues. At the bottom of the basin space, it is provided for accumulation of impurities and a perforated cover is provided at the top to admit the rain water into the basin. A hood is provided to prevent escape of sewer gas. So, imagine this to be the road and that is your footpath, you would have a covering right and then this is a catch basin hood and from here that is the wall right. From here all the silt, grit and debris actually start settling down at the base and the water flows from the hood and then enters into the sewer line from there. Sewage pumping stations are uh, uh, spaces where transportation of water, waste water happens where because of continuous gravity flow it is not uh, feasible, but due to any obstacle which might lie in the path of a sewer or in kind of a, any kind of a receiving end, then a pumping station is required. Pumping for sewage could be centrifugal, single suction and non-clogging type of pumps. They have impellers which would have two or three veins. The components of a sewage pumping station are they could be screens which would uh, you know screen out large floating matters which would damage the pumps. Next there would be a dry well. Now, this dry well is basically to house the pump and there is a wet well for receipt of waste water. So, for consideration of uh, design with respect to sewage pumping station more than one pump should be provided in case of variable discharges. Two pumps for smaller station and two for large pumping stations should be used. The total pumping capacity of a pumping station should be at least equal to the peak flow. Standby pump should also be provided and its capacity should be at least 50 percent of the peak sewage flow. Alternate source of apply, uh, power supply must be provided at the pumping station. Pumps should be self priming that should be self evacuating and should operate under positive suction head. Each pump should have an individual intake. Screens with at least 50 mm opening should be provided at the pump suction to avoid any particle entering into your pumps. The dry well sizes should be sufficient to house a pumping machinery. Dry well should be provided with the pumps which are usually reciprocating pumps to pump out all the sewage leaks in dry well. Sluice walls should be provided at the suction as well as non return walls at the delivery site. At the wet well there should be a detention time which should be not greater than 30 minutes to avoid any kind of septic conditions. Designing of a pumping station is basically based on the operating volume of a wet well. A wet well has to fulfill at least two requirements. 
one is the pump should not have been started and should not be started and stopped frequently because that brings in overheating of the motors and the time between two successive startups should not should be more than the minimum cycle time as given by the pump manufacturer. The cycle time given by the manufacturer is mostly 5 to 10 minutes and most for the large pipe pumps it is at least 15 to 20 minutes. The detention time in wet well at an average flow should not be more than 30 minutes to avoid any kind of septic conditions. The various appurtenances as I mentioned uh, are basically structures or other types of structures which allow the operational capacity of a sewer. The main types of appurtenances are manhole, drop manhole, gully pit or trap, intercepting trap or master trap, septic tank, soak pit well or soak well, cost effective sanitation system, holding tank, sewage disposal system, inspection pit, the shape of the sewer, the self cleansing velocity, ventilation shafts and sewer joints. So, we are going to look at each of these appurtenances one by one. Manhole, I have already mentioned about the manhole to you. So, I am just going to show you certain sections here with respect to how a manhole is seen at the ground level that is at the footpath level right and then that is the band of RCC that you see right that is casted and then you will have your ladders there. Okay. So, this is for maintenance for any human to enter and then to bring up any kind of maintenance. There would be a sewer line which basically goes at this base section, the base to collect all the dirt, grit and sand particles the base would be provided and right above that base would be the sewer line. So, uh, most of it the walling system is basically configured through reinforced steels. The drop hole provision is basically going to decrease the length of uh, the pipe as well as cost of evacuation when compared to the uh, manhole. So, this is a drop manhole that is how it looks like. So, you have these ladders or steps for maintenance, there is a manhole lid. Okay. And then these are the steps which are seen here. So, from here you can come down until the branch sewer is seen and the branch sewer would have the main sewer being connected and before which a flow pipeline is given as a branch sewer again to kind of see as to how exactly the water could move in terms of excess of water. The gully pit or a gully trap is basically any house drainage systems most essential part of a uh, drainage pipe. It cuts off all the, uh, how the house from its direct connection with the sewer system and the barrier is caused by the water seal of this trap which is at least 75 mm. The intercepting trap or a master trap is also called as a disconnecting trap. Now, this disconnecting trap basically disconnects the whole house from the street sewer and is placed in a small chamber between the lower end of the house drain and the street sewer. So, what happens is this is the house drain right and this is an air vent which is provided to the manhole that is a manhole. You have a plug which is at the inspection level okay? and these are the steps from where a human enters all right? and then an interceptor is basically brought in okay? and this interceptor is provided so that the primary object of preventing any kind of foul gas and pathogenic bacteria does not enter the house. And it has a deeper seal which is not less than 100 mm and has a cleaning eye for periodic cleaning. Septic tank is another kind of a tank which is horizontally laid, it has continuous flow 
one story sedimentation tank of masonry or concrete through which the sewage is allowed to flow slowly which permits suspended material to settle at the bottom whereas any anaerobic decomposition is established resulting in the change of some of the organic matter into liquid and gaseous substances they are usually built underground the anaerobic bacteria actually flourish in the absence of oxygen here and due to the warmth and those conditions are created in the septic tank. The heavier matter settles at the bottom and the lighter matter forms a layer called scum. These tanks are made air as well as watertight. Septic tanks would have both inlet and outlet pipes which are bent downwards and they are open ends are kept midway in the water level. And the center of the outlet is kept generally at least 50 to 75 mm below the center of the inlet pipe. As a precaution against the disturbance of the scum as well as sludge, a vertical partition wall is also provided at the lower portion. The septic tank is long, a second baffle wall is also provided. If the septic tank has a rate flow of efficiency of desired to be equal to the rate of flow of the influent at all times. Now that is how a septic tank looks. If you look at it in section, that is the inlet, right? inlet and then you have your outlet too. So, inlet it enters there are exercises here the effluent is here sludge stays here the scum comes in there and only effluent or filtered comes out into the treatment or the dispersal system through the outlets. That is the inspection pipe with a cap you would have a manhole cover the inlet, the wastewater would be here since it is covered continuously through and through the oxygen is absent, right. So, sludge gets formed here and scum gets formed here, the water goes to the drain fields. The design of a septic tank basically hinges on the required volume of the tank calculation which consists on three functions, one is settling space, one is digestion space and the third is the storage space. Stage uh, 1 which is settling basically requires a space for the accommodation of effluent as well as heavier particles during the detention period. Now, this is obtained by determining average flow during the detention period. Very large capacity is required for settling because based on the average flow a detention period of at least 24 hours is generally provided. Here latrines are connected and all of them are connected to the septic tank through an average flow per capita per day which is taken at least at 45 liters. If the wastewater is able to be treated the average flow can be from 90 to 115 liters. For digestion a provision of at least 42 liters is given and there is no mixing heating in this space and operation goes in the natural method. A space which is required for storage of digested sludge requires storage of this sludge before it goes out into the cleaning. Here at least 0.213 liters of uh, per day is needed because so much of storage volume is dependent on the frequency of cleaning. So, in 6 months the quantity of digested sludge per capita would be at least 38.3 liters or at least 28 liters which are compacted. So, period of sludging and storage capacity keeps increasing depending on the amount of maintenance that you are going to provide for your um, septic tanks. Soak pits are masonry wells which are of at least 3000 mm in depth from the ground level. They are built in dry brickwork and they allow water from the well to seep into the soil. The top of the well, well is covered by an RCC slab by the manhole. So, what happens in a soak pit is all the effluent from a septic tank is diverted into this well through pipes which tickles into the big bat filling. After it tickles, there is a period upon which it rests. When the brick bats are saturated, it seeps into the soil through the dry brickwork. 
when all these soak wells require periodic cleaning when all the filled materials are saturated and clogged and the well does not function properly. This is basically provided in the rural areas where the well wall is then repaired if found damaged. It is then filled again with dry fills as before for normal functioning. So, this is a section of a soap pit that is a manhole you would have an inlet and all the effluent which comes out of your toilets is basically let out here. It keeps saturating and until it saturates till a certain point it is actually kept forward. Cost effective sanitation system this basically is uh, one of the system which works on uh, understanding the low income communities in rural and semi urban areas who cannot afford a proper conventional sanitation system. So, they look for alternative systems which could be low cost also. The conventional system of sanitation is basically capital intensive and an in house water facility as one of its prerequisites. So, what happens here is a ventilated improved pit latrines are provided along with poor flush latrines. These cater to the need of the low income facilities in both the kind of areas. The first one the ventilated improved pit latrine, it is one of the most improved system of traditional pit latrine. It, this latrine effectively eliminates all the odors, flies and mosquitoes. The digested excreta can also be removed from the latrine very safe. This shows the detail of a pit latrine. The principal components of this kind of a latrine is the superstructure is built on terms of privacy as well as convenience. The cover slab is provided, pits below the superstructure can be performed uh, functionally as an alternative. Sand filters are provided at the bottom to allow infiltration. Vent pipes with fly screen are provided for ventilation. A cup full of kerosene to the pit every week would be effective for mosquito control. The next type of latrine is a poor, uh, poor flush latrine. These function in the similar method as in ventilated improved uh, pit latrines, but they are still better as they trap the water in a seal. The squat pan and the superstructure is detached from the pits. So, this contains uh, leach pits of requisite sizes. According to the number of uses, minimum 2 pits are at least required. The effluent from all the squatting pan flows directly into the leach pit where uh, it is digested and the liquid effluent passes through perforations and is absorbed in the soil. When one pit is full with the digested sludge, entry of the effluent is closed and the flow is diverted to the second pit. The digested sludge in the first pit left there for some time for full digestion is then dug out and used as fertilizer. This performs three basic functions, digestion of fresh excreta, storage of digested excreta and infiltration of wastewater into the surrounding oil. Poor flush latrines would have a question of pollution into the soil because what happens is so once the excreta passes through this it actually enters into one system and once this fills in it goes into the next system. So, when that is working you have to make sure uh, all the objections are eliminated by providing an envelope of sand around the pits which would act as filters. So, when this filters are provided at a safer distance of at least 3 meters from any kind of drinking water sources. Holding tank. This is one of the most safest methods because it has very little scope for pollution or contamination. These are water tanks, preferably RCC tanks which are watertight and here the effluent is not allowed to be digested, but it is pumped into an effluent carrying tanker and thrown into the sewage system for final disposal. The size of the tank here is very big and the volume is to be collected in the tank because the entire quality of the effluent has to be transported from the holding tank to the disposal site. That is a holding tank. So, what happens is you pump it all out okay, and then you take it 
in, uh, into a tank and then from there it is transported. Next is sewage disposal system. These are various technologies which are available for sewage treatment and disposal. The technologies are far or more lesser in consideration with respect to pollution levels. There are four different types of technologies, activated sludge process which is ASP, trickling filter TF, waste stabilization ponds WSP and aerated lagoons or oxidation ditches. The activated sludge processes and the trickling filters are conveniently uh, good sewage treatment plants and are associated with highly complex unit processes and operations. They have comparative less impact on the environment and require very less land area. Waste stabilization plant if it is properly designed and maintained is one of the simplest and the least expensive wastewater treatment technology which requires external energy as well as some kind of mechanical equipment. Aerated lagoon is a system which requires more mechanical equipment and external power but less in comparison to ASP and TP. An inspection pit or chamber is a miniature form of a manhole which is provided in each of your houses drainage system in order to open out the house drainage. And to inspect the condition of the flow, cleaning of obstructions and providing branch connections with the main lane or the house drain. It is also provided at every change of direction, change of gradient or every 30 meters interval at the point where the vertical soil pipes would join the house drain. Shape of sewer is very important for us to actually consider the efficiency of flow desired, so structural capacity or stability as well as convenience in terms of maintenance and operation. Usually circular sections are used, but circular sections are not very effective in combined system because the flow in dry weather conditions becomes negligible whereas compared to the rainy season. But when it is semi elliptical or U shaped, the cross section also goes on reducing with the discharge and the velocity is not altered. Such shapes are costlier in construction, but dilution of power pressure is equally seen as one of the most important aspects here. Also if proper shape is not provided, self cleansing velocity will not be obtained which is very essential for efficient functioning of a sewer. A self cleansing velocity is basically done to prompt clean a sewer by generating some kind of an increased velocity of flow. Now these flows would have large quantities of both organic as well as inorganic solids and are carried with the sewage. The solids which remain with floating with the velocity of the flow. At lower velocity stagnation condition approaches while which results in deposition of the solids. Such velocity is termed as self cleansing velocity. This again depends on scoring, action of the flowing sewage and the material used for the sewage conduit. Ventilation shafts. Ventilation shafts are um, the shafts which are basically going to be decomposing all the sewer decomposition which had have the putrescent organic material while it is at the point of disposal produces a lot of foul smell and corrosive and explosive mixture of gases in the sewer. These gases act upon the sewers reducing the life of the pipelines as well as carrying capacity and might even bring in fatal accidents to the maintenance crew. So, ventilating the shaft is provided and it is connected with the sewers for release of the gases. A typical shaft is seen here. So, the uh, uh, ventilation shaft would have a cowl, a shaft and a sewer. So, that is the sewer and every sewer should have this kind of a ventilation shaft. Sewer joints. Each sewer would have a lot of joints and a good sewer joint should actually satisfy all the economically um, easier to construct and watertight resistant to penetration of any kind of tree roots resistant to sewage gases and acids should be flexible, non-absorbent as well as durable. There are various types of joints which are used in sewage lines, bandage joints, sipgot and socket joints 
collar joints and flesh joint. So, with this we end uh, the conveyance of sewage system into the whole uh, main sewer line. Thank you so much. <laughs>